Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My stepbrother faked medical reports to exclude Maine from a family trip now he's facing the consequences for years of lies. Hi, the incident I'll be talking about today happened between me, a 23-year-old female, and my stepbrother, a 23-year-old male. Let's call him Tom for the sake of the story. I was adopted by my stepfather during my preteens after my biological father left my mother for someone else he liked. My mother hadn't been in great health, so his reasoning was that he couldn't handle the burden. After the divorce, my mom met my stepdad at the hospital, where he was treating her as a doctor. They felt a connection and soon got married. My stepfather was widowed and had a son. Tom Tom didn't like me or my mom from the start. At first, both parents thought it was just a reaction to the new family dynamic. But Tom's behavior didn't change much over the years. He wasn't openly hostile, but he was distant and extremely rude. For example, we went to the same school, but he wouldn't acknowledge me as his sister or invite me to play with his friends. Shortly after their marriage, my mother fell seriously ill, and it was revealed that she was suffering from stage 4 cancer and wouldn't live much longer. That's when my stepdad decided to adopt me so I would have someone to call family after my mother passed away. Even during my mother's passing, Tom didn't get involved much. Instead, he planned a vacation with his friends on the day of her wake, and after his father's insistence and a lot of drama, he canceled it. My stepdad was extremely kind to me throughout my childhood and never made me feel like an outsider, but he was very busy with work and was barely home. So, with just Tom and me together, many silly fights happened. One thing I realized was that Tom was spoiled. Tom was an above-average student but couldn't get into a good college. I, on the other hand, was very academically driven and knew I'd get into a great school. We both had plans to go to med school after graduation, with his goal being to make money, while mine was to follow in my stepdad's footsteps. We rarely saw each other once we left for college, only during holidays. I had no contact with him outside of our house, and it was during family gatherings that I found out he was wasting his time and money partying with friends, but I didn't care. After graduation, we both took the med school entrance exam. I got in on my first attempt, while Tom failed. From then on, his dislike for me turned into jealousy. My stepdad was thrilled about my success and planned a short vacation for Tom and me to Cambodia. Tom hesitated at first, but agreed after my dad convinced him by promising to oversee his study progress for his next attempt. I was just excited to have some free time after working so hard. We had a flight scheduled for the evening, and in the afternoon, my stepdad came into my room, looking stressed. I asked what was wrong. And that's when he told me I might not be able to go on the vacation with them. I was confused and asked why. He explained that Tom had been looking through some old books in my stepdad's closet and had come across medical reports that belonged to me. My stepdad said my mother never showed them to him, but they indicated that I had a condition since childhood that made it unsafe for me to fly. For context, my college was only an hour's drive from home, so I'd rarely taken flights over the years. I looked at the reports, and they seemed legitimate. I was disappointed, and my stepdad decided to cancel the trip altogether. I didn't want that because he'd been really looking forward to it, so I insisted that he and Tom go without me. After some back and forth, they agreed. The next week turned out to be much more eventful than I had expected. My stepdad kept sending me photos from their vacation, and I responded half-heartedly for his sake. I was still curious about the medical reports, so I decided to research the condition using Google and some friends from med school prep. I discovered that the disease was hereditary, so I decided to check my mom's medical records to see if she had it. To my surprise, she didn't. I then thought it might have come from my dad's side. My biological father wasn't a great person, and he'd been in and out of jail. I contacted the jail to ask for his medical information, explaining that I needed it for my own health. They told me he'd need to sign for the release of the records, and a couple of days later, I got a call saying my dad had signed and I could collect the reports. It turned out my biological dad didn't have the condition either. At that point, I was left with two possibilities, either I wasn't his child or the reports were fake. The second option seemed more likely because I'd found a paternity test among my mother's records proving that my biological dad was indeed my father. I called some friends to tell them how confused I was. 
One of them mentioned it's not hard to fake medical reports for money. This made me immediately suspicious of Tom because he was the one who'd found the reports and shown them to my stepdad. I felt bad about invading his privacy, but I decided to search Tom's room. In a desk drawer under some papers, I found a draft of the fake medical reports with notes in Tom's handwriting about how to create convincing fakes. I was shocked. I knew Tom didn't like me but I never thought he'd go this far to exclude me. I also found a suspicious-looking diary, but I was too overwhelmed by the reports to look through it at the time. I wanted to tell my stepdad immediately, but decided not to ruin his trip. When I finally calmed down, I went back to Tom's room to tidy up a bit. I found the black diary again and decided to open it. What I found was beyond anything I could have imagined. The diary detailed all the money Tom had borrowed from loan sharks during college. There were names and phone numbers, and I gathered the courage to call one of the numbers. They confirmed that Tom owed them a lot of money. I called one of Tom's former roommates, who told me Tom had fallen into bad habits during his first year of college and eventually dropped out. Tom had been using the tuition money our dad sent to pay off loan sharks. At this point, I was in shock. Not only had Tom faked medical reports to keep me from going on vacation, but he was also hiding a massive financial problem. I impatiently waited for my stepdad and Tom to return from their trip. When they got back, I confronted them. Tom tried to avoid the conversation, but I showed my stepdad the reports and told him everything. Tom eventually confessed that he had faked the reports because he felt neglected by his dad after my mom passed and was jealous of my success. This was only the beginning of the revelations about Tom's double life, which led to an even bigger family crisis. My stepdad was heartbroken but supportive as we tried to deal with the fallout of Tom's lies and the legal issues that followed. Update 1. After Tom stormed out of the house, we got a call from his maternal aunt. She'd seen him pass by her house in a car and wondered if he was there to visit. Hearing news about Tom calmed my stepdad a bit and he asked her if he'd stopped by. She said he hadn't but promised to call him and see if he wanted to stay the night since she sensed something was wrong. A few hours later, my stepdad got a text from her saying that Tom was safe and staying with her. My stepdad immediately got ready to drive over and bring Tom back home, but I stopped him. I told him that now was the perfect time to reveal the bigger truth about Tom, and he needed to sit down and hear it. I went into my room and grabbed Tom's diary, which I had hidden since I found it. I showed it to my stepdad and explained everything how Tom had been taking loans from shady people, dropped out of college, and been living a lie. My stepdad was speechless, holding his head in his hands, trying to process everything. We both decided that now wasn't the time to bring Tom back home, at least not until my stepdad could make sense of everything. Over the next few days, he kept in touch with Tom's aunt to keep tabs on him. But after a couple of days, her attitude toward my stepdad shifted. She seemed colder, and eventually she told him that Tom had explained why he ran away from home, claiming that my stepdad was treating him unfairly by favoring me. My stepdad was furious at this accusation and tried to explain the truth to her. He even sent her copies of the fake medical reports that Tom had forged. After that, she fell silent and said she'd talk to Tom and get back to him later. That night, we got another call from her. Tom had left her house while she was at work, taking with him a stash of emergency cash she kept hidden in a drawer. He'd also left her a note saying he was heading to his grandparents' house in another state and asked her not to tell my stepdad. At this point, my stepdad was completely fed up with Tom and his behavior. Instead of wasting time searching for him, my stepdad called his parents Tom's grandparents, but they didn't answer the phone. They rarely use their phones, so my stepdad wrote them a letter explaining everything and asked them to call as soon as Tom arrived. Update 2. It's been a week since the last update and things have escalated. My step-grandparents live in a nearby state, and the letter reached them within two days. Tom had already arrived at their house, and they had no idea about the letter. When they received it, they called my stepdad and asked him to come meet them urgently. My stepdad and I flew out that night. When we arrived, Tom's grandparents sat us down in the living room and tried to calm my stepdad down, who was clearly agitated. They said Tom was safe in his room but refused to see us because he was scared of what might happen. My stepdad explained everything to his parents, the fake medical reports, the stolen money, and Tom's overall behavior. But his father interrupted him, saying they already knew about Tom's side of the story. Tom had convinced them that my stepdad was planning to leave everything to me in his will, cutting Tom out entirely. 
my stepdad tried to convince his father that this wasn't true, that he didn't even have a will, but Tom had somehow forged fake documents to back up his story. The grandparents were reluctant to believe my stepdad, and after hours of arguing, we left without seeing Tom as we were leaving. We saw Tom looking down at us from his bedroom window, looking sorry but saying nothing. My stepdad was devastated not just by Tom's actions, but by the fact that his own family was turning against him. He felt betrayed and defeated, but he was determined to move on. Before we left, Tom's grandmother mentioned that they were planning to give Tom all the inheritance that was supposed to go to my stepdad. This hurt him deeply, but he kept quiet, feeling that trying to argue would only make things worse. Update 3. It's been a few days since the last update, and my stepdad and I have decided to move on with our lives. I've been preparing for med school, while my stepdad has thrown himself back into work. We hadn't heard from Tom or his grandparents and were trying to focus on other things. One day, my stepdad got a missed call from his parents. Since they rarely use their phones, he immediately called back, worried that something had happened. His mother answered, crying, and handed the phone to his father, who sounded tense. My step-grandfather explained that after we left, Tom had broken down in front of them, crying about how he had no money and no future. They felt sorry for him and wrote him a check for emergencies. The next day, Tom took the check and disappeared, leaving no note or explanation. They had tried calling him, but his phone was off. My stepdad tried to calm them down and promised to help find Tom. He came home early that day and made a Facebook post explaining everything Tom had done stealing from his aunt and grandparents, forging documents, and lying to everyone. He warned people not to fall victim to Tom's schemes. The post got a lot of attention. After discussing it with Tom's aunt and grandparents, they decided to file a police report against Tom for robbery and forgery. They went to the local police station and filed the complaint. It was a difficult decision, but they all agreed it was necessary. My stepdad promised to take care of the case on their behalf. Update 4, I know this update is long overdue, but I've been busy with med school and am only now writing since I'm back home for the Christmas weekend. Up until I left for college, there was no news about Tom's whereabouts. I was worried about leaving my stepdad alone with all this going on, but he assured me he'd be fine and would call if he needed me. A day after I left, my stepdad received a call from a prison in another state. It was Tom, asking him to bail him out. He'd been arrested for breaking into an empty house after losing all his money at a casino. The homeowner saw him on their security cameras and called the police. Tom had only remembered my stepdad's number and called him for help. My stepdad, however, was so disgusted by Tom's actions that he hung up without saying a word. He then called the police and asked if Tom could also be charged with the thefts from his aunt and grandparents. The officer said they'd look into it and get back to him. Later that day, we found out the robbery charges were dropped because the homeowners didn't want to press charges fearing their own son's involvement. However, Tom was still set to go to trial for the thefts from his family. Update 5. The trial date came, and the courtroom was packed. Tom's aunt, my stepdad, and several other witnesses testified against him. Tom's defense team argued that he was a good kid who had made poor choices under financial pressure. Despite the defense's arguments, the jury found Tom guilty on all counts. The judge sentenced him to a year in prison, followed by probation, and ordered him to repay his aunt and grandparents, though it could take years. After the trial, Tom wrote me a letter apologizing for everything and asking for a second chance to rebuild our relationship. I visited him in prison, where he apologized profusely. I told him there was no relationship to rebuild until I could fully trust him again, but I agreed to help him with study materials so he could continue his education in prison. I told my stepdad about it, and while he wasn't happy, he said he wouldn't interfere if I felt it was the right thing to do. Now, six months later, Tom is still in prison, and our family is slowly healing. My stepdad has cut all contact with Tom, and while I'm not sure where our relationship will go, I'm willing to give him another chance, even if it's a slow process. Thanks for watching till the end. Wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share. I'd love to hear from you.